Hello everybody, this is Marma Vexwerver and welcome to another episode of Let's Make a PID Loop. So this episode we are gonna still further talk about integral. Uh, imagine a situation like this. Uh, for instance, right now, if we start to use this controller directly, what it's gonna do is that at the very beginning, when your error, for instance, is like a foot, your integral is gonna add up, and it's gonna add up very fast, because uh, every time your error is kind of like, uh, uh, where's our convergence scale? Of approximately 100. So if you type in 12, uh, right now your error is like uh, 1200. And um, the error is going to keep adding up 1,200, 900, uh, 600. So it's, uh, the, the, the integral, if you do this right now, you, if you put, it, put this thing into test, if you put this controller into test, the integral is going to add up very fast. And we don't have any m methods of control over that. Even though we have a very small ki, is uh, the final uh, value of integral, even multiplied by this ki right now, because we start to add up, starting when the error was very big, it's going to add up fast. Eventually, this integral is going to get very big, and it's going to dominate this entire value of final power, hopefully making it, I don't know, a, a few thousands. And however, we know that the final power is just negative 1 to 7 to, uh, I mean, 1 to 7. And that's what we want to see. We don't, we, I mean, we don't want thousands of uh, final power, and the motor just finally gets a signal, all right. I'm just gonna hit the target with full power. Although after hitting the target with full power, uh, the robot probably will still go forward because right now we don't have any limits. Although the uh, error gets negative and the negative error starts to accumulate and the proportion starts to try to reverse the robot back, the huge value at the beginning you accumulated with your integral raw, that will mess up your entire PID loop. And the, the integral right now, in this case, hopefully you didn't test it out. I'm going to tell you right now, even though it gives you a very, very, very small value, it's going to mess up your loop. So how do we solve that? First, let's answer this question, like, what do we use integral for? And I should have answered that better in the last video, but let's essentially talk about it. What, why do we want to use something that exponentially accumulates as time goes? Why do we want something that accumulate your error as time goes and why do we want that to add that accumulated and scaled down value to our final power why is that the case so the reason is that probably uh, probably i'm going to uh do more about motors but um basically when your proportion when when your robot gets very close to the uh target and that when your proportion or when your error is very small and you use a very small KP, you scale it down, there's going to be a certain gap like one or two inches between your robot and your target in which your proportion is so small that the motor just doesn't move. So even with your momentum, even though that you have some momentum and the robot shoots around the target, the error in this case is just so small and without integral, just with proportion, your robot just basically can't move around the target because the proportion value, because it's linear with respect to the error, is just too small. And uh, it can't, the proportion, what proportion does is that it slows the robot down as the robot approaches to the target and it gets the robot around the target. But when the robot is extremely close to the target, the the uh, proportion can't do a lot about it. I mean, when the you when you give you uh, I mean when you give your base a value like around 15, usually your base doesn't move because your base has weight and uh, the motor has a dead band naturally that comes with the motor, and um, so just with proportion probably your robot is not going to perform very well dealing with small errors or extreme precision, and that's where your integral comes in. Your integral, when the proportion doesn't work, when your error is fairly small, the integral starts accumulating those small errors over time. Even though you have an error of, say, 20, the integral just keeps adding 20 up, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. And then the robot will know that, all right, I just have an error of 20, but integral lets me know that over time, this is a big deal. And uh, because I add this stuff over time, over time, the robot is going to know, 
I still have an error. And uh, this value added added to the power you give to the you added to the final power you give to the base. Even though the proportion in this case is very small, probably like five or something, the integral is going to keep adding up, adding up, and eventually add up to a value that's able to move the robot like 40. Gradually move this robot towards the, the to, uh, I mean towards the um, the uh, uh, target, and that is usually in vex robotics what integral is mostly used for to eliminate that little zone that your proportion can't get you through to get you finally to the target. So, with this mentality, how do we approach this issue? Basically, let, 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 let's just do this. For instance, right here, these distances, in, this, uh, in the distance, uh, let's just say that this is my start, and this is my, and the zero is my target. And um, these are also distances. Let's say that I start from here. This is where I start. And then zero is my target. And all of these, let's just say that all of these distance, these are distance in, uh, uh, these are arrow zones, or I would probably say that, in which your proportion is going to be big enough to move the robot. However, when your proportion moves the robot all the way to here, you are left with a zone in which the arrow is too small, the proportion doesn't do so well, the proportion doesn't even affect the robot. And this is where we want the integral to come into play. Not starting all the way from here and accumulating everything and blow things up and make the robot overshoot all the way over here, but we set the integral equal to zero when the proportion can work. And then we start, and, and then basically we start integral once the proportion doesn't work. So that's this, that is the first limit we need to place on the integral. We only activate the integral or start the error accumulation when we enter this zone when we enter this zone in which the proportion can work and we only make it do precise adjustments all right so let's do that um, so how we do that uh, first we need to define this distance which is basically a distance of error or something uh, let's just say that let's define this distance as um, integral active zone that is the, the uh, thing I usually use, uh, I'm going to put this variable down here, and I am go going to make it a float, because you will see why in a second, float integral active zone. And I only define this by this distance rather than both of them, because I just find that easier to deal with positive and negative signs. So in the integral negative zone, and we want to give it a preset, and uh, basically it's a constant, and I'm just kind of lazy to type, to type constant in front of it, but uh, actually you should inform a program, you should type constant in front of it, but uh, this, 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 I mean, this goes well for me. Uh, excuse me, let me see how much time we have. Alrighty, so not a lot of time left. So today, I guess we'll just set up the integral active zone and uh, we will keep on finishing the limiting integral idea in the next video. Alright, so integral active zone, I want to, but like uh, usually, uh, you can basically see on your robots, like um, after uh, you just put in, simply put in, or you just simply make the KI zero, and then you test the thing, which is basically the, dis the I'm disabling KI, and just using proportion. You can see that after the robots gets around the uh, the um, uh, target, you can move the robot. I mean, you can move the base around the target, and there's a little tolerance at which you can move depending on how much you, uh, I mean, how much you set the uh, uh, proportion value. And that is the zone in which the proportion can't do much to resist your movement. However, uh, after you're moving it for a bit, you, I mean, you can basically feel that th there's a certain place where your hand cannot push any further. That's when the proportion is actually uh, functioning. So we want that little zone. In, in that little zone, we want the integral to function to get us to the target so that we are going to you can test it out, but I'm just going to guesstimate that zone, and still we are going to use this little uh, ink to, um, a, a inch to ticks, this little function. We're going to use this thing right here to convert our familiar inches to ticks. I would guess that this distance is around 1.5 inch, I would say. So let's go into the ticks, 1.5. Because when we are dealing with our um, integral raw, 
we are uh, dealing, we are talking in terms of ticks because we are accumulating up the ticks value. So that uh, we are accumulating the ticks value, so uh, we need to convert our 1.5 into the tick. However, because we are directly dealing with the, uh, excuse me, let me see. Negro active zone. Yes, I think that is good. Into ticks. Yes, that's good. All right. Actually, I'm going to change this a little bit bigger, like 1.5 inches, a little bit too small, so I might change it to 3 inches. All right. So hopefully this episode gives you a little bit. We haven't gotten into the algorithm yet, which is not going to be difficult once you get the concept. You just do if statement, which is going to be done in the next video. But hopefully this video gives you a little bit of intuition about how or what, why is integral used and why do we need to define the zone and uh, uh, I mean why doesn't proportion work when you are extremely close to the target and things of that nature and um, this is Martin Love X Forever and thank you very much I will see you in the next video